Hi guys, my name is Kayla Smith Holland and I'm a registered dietitian with Fresenius Kidney Care and we are asking you to meet us at the table. Today I'll be cooking with Mr. Sam Trevino, a patient's experience manager with Fresenius and Dr. Jameson, a Washington DC area nephrologist. Our first recipe is a cauliflower pizza that can be found on the Fresenius Kidney Care website. Sam, I would love to demonstrate how they can get to this website from home. Would you mind being my Vanna? Sure. <laughs> That's one thing I've always wanted to do my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> From your local web browser, you select it and you navigate to the FreseniusKidneyCare.com website. Once there, you would find recipes and nutrition and it would give you a ton of options. So what I like to do, my fun shortcut, is type in what I'm feeling right now. So for us, we're making pizza. Here we are, a Mediterranean cauliflower pizza. How good does that look, guys? Very. Now that we know how to get here, let's get started. So guys, this is a really simple recipe. Like, one thing about Fresenius Kidney Care recipes is that they tend to be low on ingredients, short on steps, and quick with time. <laughs> but full pack of nutrients. So step one here, is finding our fresh cauliflower. As Dr. Jameson knows, fresh is best. I, I believe that. What about you, Sam? Oh yeah, I like to tell people, if you can stay outside of the middle of the grocery store where everything is packaged and then boxed, if you can go to the produce and meat section, that's where you're gonna find the, the best stuff. And because patients who have kidney disease are challenged with phosphorus being high in their diet, you need to stay away from packaged and processed foods. So fresh gives you lower phosphorus and tastes better. It really does. And the reason behind that is that big food companies tend to use additives that are really high in phosphorus and are really hard for your body to clean as a dialysis patient or with low kidney function. So our goal here today is to show you that there are just alternatives. Yep. And you know, a lot of people don't understand what phosphorus or potassium, like how that affects the body. But I'll tell you right now, you know, um, when my phosphorus used to be elevated or out of range, my skin would itch terribly. And uh, I mean, sometimes to the point that I would scratch so hard that I would draw blood. So make sure that you guys, if you're a patient, if you're a care partner of a patient and you see that itching going on, it could be a phosphorus issue. Talk to your dietitian, talk to your doctor. Thanks, Sam, it's true. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the grocery store and we're gonna grab a big thing of cauliflower. Yes, this thing is huge, but it's our crust, so we wanna make sure we have enough of it. We're gonna grab your local grater and we are going to grate. It's really easy, it doesn't take much time. And while you're doing it, invite a friend to come and cook with you. Tell a funny story. <laughs> Sam, I know you have a few. Yes, I have tons of funny stories, you know, and jokes. When you're doing this, it doesn't have to be a lot of work. You can bring your friends in, like you said, have your, you know, your, your wife or husband or your kids do some of this work. It can make everything fun. You can turn music on, you know, and do your little happy food dance while you're cooking. You know, just have a good time with it. What, what you guys didn't see before we started filming is that we had a dance party in here ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Show us what you're doing. What does it look like when you grate it? Because I'm seeing that it looks so powdery, almost like uh, fine, fine Parmesan cheese. Can I, can I show them? Yes. You can could... you see this? Yeah, that's great. So. And the beautiful thing about cauliflower is that it can be manipulated into a lot of different things. So we're going to take this beautiful head and turn it into crust. Obviously, this is a lot of cauliflower and it's going to take me a little bit of time to grate it. So you guys are gonna get the brand, the finished product right now. All right guys, for the ease of the show, we already cooked the cauliflower. How we like to cook it is to saute it with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna grab my oven mitt, cause safety first. I'm gonna transfer this into a dish so it can be cooled. We will let this set and cool off for about 10 minutes. All right, that's looking good. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. The next thing we're gonna do is mix our sun-dried tomatoes along with lemon that I've already cut the pulp out of. 
So here's my lemon, because this is not your a common step that most people read about. Right. It's not zesting, it's not peeling, and it's not juicing. You're going to slice your lemon in half. It'd help if I use the sharp side, guys. <laughs> you know, that's always a good idea. <laughs> you caught it. That's important. I did catch it, but it would help. So you guys can kind of see the white part around the lemon. We don't want that. Because there won't be any processing, this will not be grinded up. We're gonna eat it in its most natural state. We're gonna just cut around it, similar to this, and just make sure we get those nice little triangles. So no seeds and no white part. Let me grab my bowl. And you guys can see a good one. See, Sam? Mm -hmm. You're making my mouth water. Yeah, it, it is really, Cool, it's a little time consuming, so I'm gonna show you guys one and then I'm gonna use the ones I've already cut. So what does the lemon do for your cauliflower, Kayla? So in this case, the lemon is actually one of the toppings. It's providing some acidity um, to kind of balance out the flavorfulness of this sun-dried oil-packed tomatoes. So you think tomatoes, you think acidity, mm -hmm. but the oil kind of dulls it out a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it just gives it a nice little Uma. <laughs> that little mwah. Yes, it is the uma. Thank you, Dr. J. <laughs> so what we're going to do is mix our lemon. You got a seed in there, Kayla. Uh-oh. You guys don't want that. No. Put that there. We will mix all of our tomatoes and our oil. And we will also add olives. That's going to be the topping of my choice. So all of these pizzas have a variety of toppings, but one of the really cool things for you guys by being patients of Fresenia's kidney care is that your dietitian can give you a huge list of kidney appropriate toppings, health appropriate toppings, good for your diabetes, good for your heart, and good for your kidneys. So these are just ours, but please remember to check out with your local dietitian to figure out what is good for you. And good for the soul. And good for the soul. <laughs> 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 All right guys, so literally it's simple. We're just gonna mix this up. Let that sit there. Kind of let all of them marinate together. So now that my cauliflower is nice and cooled, I'm gonna bring my platter here, mix it with a half a cup of cheese. Uh, what cheese is that? Is that uh, mozzarella? It is mozzarella. And one of the big things, I know you guys are all looking with eyes wide and shocked that the dietitian just put cheese. What? <laughs> And honestly, it's not so much that you can never have these items, it's everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. So instead of us topping our entire pizza with cheese, we're gonna mix it into the crust. So you get a little bit of the flavor without it consuming the pizza and your kidneys. Again, you know, the reason we started this kind of idea for this show was that in my experience as a patient, you know, I often felt anxious walking into dialysis, especially at the beginning of the month, because at the beginning of the month is report cards. Uh, you know, we find out our, how our, our labs are, are, you know, have turned out for the month. And, and if you're like me, not the perfect patient, you know that there may be, you know, a couple of strikes, you know, against me with my, my diet, especially. Uh, but, you know, it was, it's nice to know that everything in moderation with some gentle substitutions, less salt, you know, less sugar, things like that uh, it really helps with that report card time. And in turn, now, you know, I, I, I could walk into my clinic, you know, with less anxiety, so. Yeah, Sam, I have a couple questions. One, I wanna tell you guys what I'm doing. So after I've just lightly mixed it with my hands, once again, that's the cauliflower, an egg, and some cheese, I'm gonna form a pie crust on my uh, pizza pan. But Sam, why was it so hard for you to follow the diet? You know, and I'm glad you asked that question. We all come from different backgrounds. We all have our, you know, our favorite foods. And, you know, food is medicine. That is something that we all truly believe. And it was uh, just a, a great way to, uh, to still have the foods that I grew up with. I am Mexican American. And, you know, I, I early in my career, uh, my journey, I almost said career, early in my journey as a patient, I felt as if 
I could not be Mexican, if that makes any sense. I, you know, I felt like I was being told that I could not eat the foods that I grew up with. I couldn't use the recipes that have been handed down for generations. And now I'm finding the, that our dietitians are eager to sit down with our people on dialysis and say, hey, what is your favorite recipe? Can you bring your recipe to your dietitian and sit down, make these gentle substitutions, and then take that recipe home? And it's still yours, it's, but it's just a little bit healthier for everyone. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna, my crust is done, but it needs to brown a little bit. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven. It's great. I hope so, guys. <laughs> that does look like a good crust, too. And you're baking that for how long, Kayla? I bake it for about 10 to 15 minutes, but mostly we want to get that brown look. Yeah. Like, we really want it to be a toasty look here. And that oven was at uh, 350? 450. 450? Oh, yes. that's why it can do so short. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yep, so a nice 450, a quick burst of heat. Mm. Don't be alarmed by the light color. This was just a pre-bake. So right now we add our toppings, which I chose sun-dried tomatoes, olives, and the inside of that lemon. Nice. You mix it up, it's been sitting there kind of marinating. If you, once you finish cooking your crust, it's good and dry and crispy and ready for the second half of baking. You'll notice that I'm not adding any more cheese because the cheese that we added was in the crust. So you're saying the cheese is in the crust. Yes, the all cheese right. is in the crust. And I see you're crust. using all of that luscious olive oil. We are, because we love our omegas over here. Hey. <laughs> we really do. And you know, you want to make sure that your pizza is flavorful to your point. So you spread this out. You use as many olives. You see, we only have a few big tomatoes here. And it's mostly an, an oil, like an olive oil based pizza. There we go, yes. That's pretty. Yep, so mine will eventually go back into the oven for another 15 minutes. 